Hi, my name is Kanu and I'm the founder and principal here at Kendo Consulting Group. We are a boutique human capital consultancy firm matching top employers with great talent and we're based in Arizona. This is Leading from the Heart, a series of interviews featuring leaders that exemplify great leadership traits. These are real conversations where I interview nominated leaders and embark on a curiosity-driven journey to discover their leadership styles and motivation. So each interview will leave you inspired with lessons and important insights that can be applied, especially if you're wanting to develop or sharpen your own leadership skills. So sit back and relax and enjoy this next episode. Hi, Harold. I'm so excited to be talking to you today on Leading with Heart, in, Leading from the Heart. And so, yeah, I just I'm going to give it, give you the mic to introduce yourself and tell us who you are. Sure. Um, yeah, it's nice talking to you too, Canoe. It's good to see you. Um, Harold Freeman. Uh, I work currently. I work for Peace Health, and um, you know, I just started out working in healthcare, um, and I'd seen a lot of you know different leadership styles. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember learning early on that you know what I liked and what I didn't like, and what <laughs> I didn't. I never. Uh, I, I knew from the start I didn't like the top down. You know, the I'm top down boss, you do what I say, mm -hmm. that's it. I don't care what what uh, ideas you have. I don't care about your personal life. I don't care what makes <laughs> you tick. Just do the job and, and, and leave me alone kind of thing. Right, right. That, that's not how I like to be managed. So mm -hmm. for me, I like I wanted to, to do things a little different. Yeah, be yeah. Creative, you know. Yeah, yeah, Get absolutely. Somebody that, uh, you know, removes obstacles and mm -hmm. is there to serve uh, people. Yeah, yeah. In order uh, to get better results, for one, but to make it a more enjoyable, fulfilling work environment for the people that I work with. Yeah, yeah. No, I I, I like that. And, and to give a little context to mm -hmm. people watching and listening to this, um, you know, you and I worked for the same organization many years ago. Uh, before we jumped on this uh, recording, we were talking, trying to remember when when it was. So we do, we do have that commonality of having worked together um, in the same organization in healthcare. So, and you have been a person that I remember even from the days of working for for Providence that you were such a good leader. And we've been connected on LinkedIn all these years and kind of seen the jobs you have taken and the roles that you've taken. And what attracted me to wanting to chat with you is mostly like what you're talking about, your leadership style. And who wants to have a manager who does the top-down approach? I mean, I've had a fair share <laughs> of leaders who lead like that. And honestly, it doesn't motivate you to want to do the work. And it's just, it doesn't feel good, right? And right. so it actually, as you're talking, it reminded me of this quote by uh, Nelson Mandela, I think it said something like um, uh, a good leader leads from the back and makes others believe they are in front. So it's like you're leading from the back and your team is like shining, but really, you know, because you're supporting them and you're giving them that sort of support they need to, to really shine. So before we get into how you lead, right. um, Tell us like your why. Why I why did you choose the leadership path? Yeah, early on, you know, um, I knew that I wanted to work in healthcare, mm -hmm. but I didn't necessarily want to work in patient care. I ah. I, I believed in um, in being a part of that patient care team mm -hmm. but I wanted to do something else and then I also had a, a, an interest in in management ah, okay so I would I would um I remember meeting my dad's uh, boss Mr. Smith and he would go up to him and it would be you know so uh he'd be this respected <laughs> guy in a suit and and everybody looked up to him and and um you know, it was just one of those things that, uh, you yeah. know, I thought, oh, this person does all of this. This person gets to be involved in the decisions. This person gets to be behind the scenes and, and make something work. 
Mm-hmm. And um, I thought that's where I wanted to be. I wanted to be in healthcare, and then mm-hmm. I wanted to be in uh, leadership as well. So I kind of oh. have the best of both worlds. And then yeah. um, I kind of started out uh, working for a company called Apria Healthcare. Mm-hmm. And I was a um, person that went into homes, set up medical equipment. Oh, okay. Okay. And I did enjoy that work. My, um, but I was trying to uh, figure out a way to get into management. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I ended up applying for every management job with no experience. No, at the time (laughs) I had no education and I was like, I I think I became known as the guy that applied for every management (laughs) job regardless, you know? And I, I remember I didn't know what I didn't know. And I was going in there you know, just trying to, and I, and I thought that maybe I deserved the job because I'd been there a while. And, right. And after a while, I realized, you know what, I need some, inf- I need to know, I need to, you know, teach myself how to become a leader. Mm. Uh, and what I did, and I, and I had gone to school right after high school, but uh, at the time it was, uh, I was working so many hours that it was, I was only doing a class here and a class there. And, mm-hmm. So at first I tried, I decided, you know, and I was still in my early twenties and I decided I'm just going to educate myself. I'm out here in this truck all day and I'm going to uh, utilize that time and start listening to audiobooks. This is, <laughs> and this, you know, it was only, you know, it was the nineties, but there was no audible. There was no internet at the time. There were no but podcasts. There yeah. was no podcasts. <laughs> and I was going to the library and checking out tapes <laughs> okay. And about got, leadership? About leadership, about business, um, you know, all of those types of, of books. And I started to learn quite a bit. And I learned that I didn't mm-hmm. know anything mm-hmm. <laughs> before, but I, I educated myself pretty well. And at that point, um, I was able to, uh, uh, I applied for a position at Providence and <laughs> in uh, the early 2000s for uh, Providence Home and Community Services. Mm -hmm. And because I had learned so much, uh, I became, you know, top of their list for this coordinator job. And it was my first management position. It was the first time I had had a stable kind of schedule. And I was able to go back to school. So at that point, I I started immediately. I went at, at night. I went to and finished my bachelor's degree, and then right after that, I got I went into my master's program, and I, I just became this person that uh, you know really wanted to learn everything I could about management, about leadership, and and through that process, I and, and from my own experience with leadership, I started to learn that I wanted to be a different leader. I wanted to be somebody that if you see them in the store or you see them at the mall and you you see the person across the aisle and they see you with, you see them with their kids or whatever. And they're like, Oh, that's the boss. I better duck. I want them to be over. (laughs) I want them to be the guy that that they run up to and they respect so much that they want to introduce their family to that. They are like, this is Terrell Freeman. He's my boss and all these great things. He's the one I've been telling you about. And, you know, that's what I wanted. I wanted, you know, to be respected and, and I wanted to be respected for yeah. you know, a good leader and a servant leader. That's awesome. Oh, wow. I didn't know that about you. That's amazing. So you literally were self-taught to begin with to get your, le- you know, your first job. And that led you to continue your education to end up in a, in a master's program and here you are today. I mean, that's, you know, there's a lesson there for a lot of people, hopefully, that listen, that may be struggling for something to happen, that you can actually work on this and make it happen okay. yourself, right? When I, I finished, actually finished my master's degree, I, I graduated top of my class. Oh, wow. And they asked me to be the speaker at the cer- the graduation ceremony. The valedictorian, yeah. Yeah, so at that after I, I did that speech and all of the... Uh, faculty was there and all the students were there and all the graduates were there and all the families were there. Um, At the reception, the dean of the business program, this was well over 10 years ago, Mm -hmm. said, you know what, we don't usually like to hire professors that are from our school because, you know, we like to have some diversity of education and skills and background. 
Mm-hmm. But we would really like you to come in and talk to us about teaching in the Bachelor's of Healthcare Administration program. Oh, wow. Yeah, so then I was on the other side starting to teach people about leadership and management and healthcare uh, leadership. And actually, I've done that now for 12 years. Oh, you're and still teaching? I'm still teaching. And at this point, I've I've taught hundreds of courses, which is, you know, I've taught more courses than um, than I actually uh, needed to take in order to get um, my bachelor's and my master's degree. So that's a, that's a completely different experience. But the point of that is that you come across people of all walks of life that are trying to do the same thing I was. Mm-hmm. And they, you know, these are special people, I think. They're working full-time, they're mothers, they're fathers, they're paying the mortgage, they're working for somebody else, and, and they want to do the same thing I did. So that's where I fell in love with, with that as well, and that kind of kept me um, educated, mm-hmm. kept me involved in that, and um, I found that those people, too, were were um, really wanting to, A, be that type of leader, learn how to be that type of leader Mm -hmm. and work for that type of leader. And uh, I didn't, I mean, I just thought it was me and a few other people and some people I, you know, some authors that I read, (laughs) but uh, you know, it's really something that, that is something that people really want out there, but there's some people, there's people out there that are, you know, changing their lives by getting their education in the evening Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. morning. And those people really kept me, motivated and inspired to continue doing that and continue doing what I do today. Yeah, that's really awesome. I I love hearing that. So if you were to, first of all, what type of leader are you? Well, I consider myself 100% to be a servant leader. Ah. To me, what that means is that I'm here to serve you. You're not here to serve me. Mm. Um, I am here to do whatever I need to do to make you successful. And as such, we'll make our organization successful. And I have found that it also helps you as a leader become successful yourself when you help other people be successful. Yeah, I, I love that. I think it goes back to like what I was talking about earlier, that quote about, you know, a great leader leads from the back and makes the people in front feel like they're in front and making your, you know, direct reports really shine and and do so well where, where, you know, some leaders are like me, 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 you know, I did this and taking all the credit away from their team. And it's like, you don't want to work for that person. So you definitely don't. And you just find yourself looking for something else. Exactly. Yeah. That's one of the things where they say, you know, People don't leave their jobs. They leave their managers and supervisors. Or, and um, mm-hmm. I think that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think if you and one thing I teach people is that you don't do it as sort of a way to, um, you know, manipulate or, you know. No, not at you all. do it. Yeah because it's the right thing to do and it's the Mm -hmm. most successful way to lead an organization. Yeah. Uh, So don't think of it as a, because you could seriously use (laughs) servant leadership in that way. Right. Um, But it's not that it's not some, it's, it's, there's no secret. It's just, you know, lead how you want to be lead. Give them the support, give them the tools they need to be successful. Mm-hmm. Give them the credit where credit is deserved. In fact, give away as much credit as you can mm-hmm. to people that do the work. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I really like that. So you were talking about uh teaching leadership classes. What do you what do you teach? So I teach uh healthcare um leadership, and I teach some of the other courses like you know, the typical healthcare um teaching about insurance and Medicare billing, managed care, that kind of thing. Mm, okay. I also have filled in in some, uh, um, you know, like uh, uh, healthcare term or medical terminology, those kind of things. But the, the classes that I like the best are the, the leadership uh, courses. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. 
Yeah. So uh, in your opinion, what would you say are some of the challenges of being a servant leader? Some of the challenges I think are, well, not everybody wants you to lead that way. (laughs) Surprisingly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Some people need uh, less autonomy. They need to be uh, told what to do and and really guided. Uh, So you have to kind of, the challenge is that you have you have to um, tailor your leadership style to meet the needs of the individual. You can't mm-hmm. just say, okay, I'm going to do everything the same. Mm-hmm. I'm going to treat this person the same, this person the same, this person the same, because everybody is driven and inspired and motivated by different things. And people need different types of direction. Some people need no feedback. Some people need a lot of feedback. Mm-hmm. So one of the challenges is trying to stay on top of that <laughs> uh, because, you know, the easy thing is to just kind of do things the, same, the right way, mm-hmm. you know, tell people what to do. Oh, I'll just do it myself. <laughs> I mean, people right. have to make their own mistakes, in my opinion, that's the way they learn. Mm-hmm. But uh, you have to know each individual. You have to spend time uh, with your people. You have to get to know what makes them tick and uh, so that can be challenging you know especially if you have large teams Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah I think what you're describing about getting to know the people that report to you and their style how they receive information how they want to be supported in the work they do that describes exactly what this whole series is about leading from the heart. Because right. if you're not leading from the heart, you're not paying attention to those very important aspects of like the different people that are, you know, working with you um, and in your team. Right. So it's, it's all about really tapping into your heart and going, what do I need to do to meet this person where they are so I can support them enough to do a really good job So that you don't have that awkward conversation when you're trying to do, you know, evaluation uh, annually or however often you do it, right? It's about really tapping into your heart and figuring out what the best way is to serve the people that you work with. So on that aspect of um, tapping into your heart, what, how would you say, how would you describe the way that you deliver bad news for example as a servant leader i think you just got to be up front you know you've got to be honest with people you can't lead people along mm-hmm. and hide things and I, I see that being a tendency because it's not fun to, to give people bad news mm-hmm. but i think what you got to do is give them the tools to get better and uh, work with them and give them every opportunity you can to succeed i think you know you hear People say, well, I, I got to work with this person, but I don't have to like them. Right. I tell them, is, I think you should like them. I think you should do everything you can to try to like the people you work with, because the more you like the people you work with, the, the more excited you are going to be to come to work, get things mm-hmm. done, do teamwork. And, um, you know, they, so I see that, but I think, um, it's okay also to care about the people you work with. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be great. It's going to be like a family. You know, there's going to be good things. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be opportunities. There's going to be hard times and difficult times. There's going to be disappointments. But right. work through them uh, through the honest servant leadership and caring about each other. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. Because when you think about it, 24 hours a day, eight hours you're sleeping, the other 16 hours you're awake, half of that you're at work. Yeah. So wouldn't it be great if you like the people you interact with the half of the time that you're at work, you know, Monday through Friday, right? Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, in reality, it's not like it's perfect all the time, right? So, right. you know, with anything, you're, you're going to... Even with your family, it's not right. perfect all the time. <laughs> you're not going to want to be around somebody some days. Right. <laughs> uh you know, you're not going to like everybody the same all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're going to yeah. do things that anger you and disappoint you and mm-hmm. annoy you. But um, overall, you like them and you care about them and you want them to succeed and you want the organization to succeed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So how in your 
world, what you do right now, how do you measure success? And as, as a servant leader as well. Well, um, I lead supply chain operations mm-hmm. currently. And what I try to do is I try to tie the mission of the organization into what we do. Obviously, in a hospital, you can't take care of patients without supplies. And um, one of those uh, things that when you're, you know, when you're a um, technician in the department, you're just delivering supplies. It's, it's sometimes it's hard to connect yourself to the actual patient and mm. make a difference. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what I try to do is um, not only for my own people, but for the customers, the internal customers and the patients is that we try to, as a group, remove the obstacles for our, for our clinicians, for our physicians, for our RNs, for our MAs and CNAs and uh, EVS employees uh, so that they can not have to focus on supplies, but they're there when they need them to do their work. And we tie that back to our mission, which is you know, to care for our community and to care for our individuals and to be um, somebody that's committed to the mission. And it's not because it's some you know, tactic again, it's, it's, it's reality. You, you, you can't do any of these things in healthcare without interconnected departments all working together. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. And if I have to worry about, you know, things that other department managers are working on, then it takes away from, from my um, ability to take care of, of my part of the, of the business. So if I can remove that obstacle and they don't have to worry about supplies and they have the things that they need to do the job when they need it to take care of our patients, that really ties back to that mission. And that's our way of taking care of our patients. Right. Yeah. No, I, I like that. I like that. Um, so when you think about, again, you know, being a servant leader, what are some traits that you feel like a person who's like an up and coming leader? What traits do you feel like are important to develop to be a really good leader? I guess it doesn't matter what leadership style they choose, but like some traits that you feel like these are the good ones that you should have to be a good leader. Well, I think um, transparency is very important. Mm-hmm. Um, giving people the information that they need. Mm-hmm. Not hoarding information for yourself. Uh, I always say, if you want to know anything about anything to do with our organization, come ask. Yeah, and it doesn't. You don't have to re- have a reason other than you're curious. If some, if one of my caregivers comes to me and is just curious about something, mm-hmm. and I either have the answer or I have the ability to get that information for them, I will do that. And so the first thing I do is I try to be transparent. I try to give them. Uh, the reasons why, because I think that's important. People don't just want to blindly do things. They want to know right. why they're doing them. Yeah. I understand that people are curious for whatever reasons they need to be. Mm-hmm. And um, having that transparent um, process, you don't have to worry about, you know, why they want the information. Why do you want that information? What are you going to do with it? Why do you need to know that? I don't care about that. They want to know it and I can give it to them. I will tell them there's nothing secret Mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, They all, you know, when you do that, you start to fill in uh, your caregivers start to fill in what you're not telling them with what, with the incorrect information. They're like, well, they're not telling us because of this, or, you know, they don't want us to know this because of this. When in reality, (laughs) It's not that way. It's it, the more you can be transparent, open. The other thing is, I think you need to be honest and sincere. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to be open, right, and not closed. Absolutely. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how many times I've gone into uh, a leader's uh, meeting and we spend two hours talking about something, but the decision's already made. Which means yeah. <laughs> they could just send you an email and say, this is what we're doing and not waste everybody's time. No, yeah, exactly. I was going to say, why waste everybody's time to talk about it when the decision is already made? Right. Mm-hmm. So um, when you got to, if you're going to bring a bunch of people in here in the room and ask for their ideas and, and really want their input, you better be coming in with an open mind to where you can absorb that information, mm-hmm. take the good things, take the bad things, right. and come up with some great 
program that was better because everybody was involved in the decision making. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think you have to um, understand that people are people, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're, you know, these aren't just machines. People have some things. There's things that they're bringing uh, from home that are going to affect their day. And you can't just expect them to leave that at home or at the door when they walk in. So that's going to affect them. So you need to be able to be compassionate yeah. uh, for people. You need to, to be empathetic and have those, um, those soft skills, those, um, what do they call that? And, uh, um, emotional intelligence. So you have to be uh, willing to be emotionally intelligent, learn those, 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 um, skills and use those skills right yeah yeah that's awesome um this is a question that i heard recently and really absolutely like it and i've been asking everyone this question that i get a chance to ask so the question is if you were to let's say whatever company or position you had before um if you were to walk in on your former employees all gathered at a table discussing you. What are they saying about you? <laughs> well, you know, you can't expect everyone <laughs> <laughs> to love you no matter what, right? <laughs> Why not, Harold? Um, they should love me. Just kidding. <laughs> but I do believe that most people would say that um, I cared for them. I gave them the tools they needed to succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, that I had their back and um, that um, I did act as a servant leader. And I think that most of them, most of them, uh, especially, you know, from some of the feedback I still get from people calling from, you know, I wish you were here or whatnot. Oh, there you go. I like that. <laughs> um, yeah, That's nice to hear. Um, mm -hmm. I recently got my F-A-C-H-E um, certification through the American College of Healthcare Organizations. And I posted the certificate on my um, LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And one of my uh, students replied to it that was on LinkedIn and said, you were my, you were my favorite professor. Oh, at, that's at that wonderful. Day. Yeah. So I was, and I was like, well, that makes my day because that's, yeah. that's the thing I want. I want them to mm -hmm. be able to um, know that we made a difference together as a group, mm -hmm. regardless of how we think about each other, that we did do some great things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So what's what was the certification and what does it stand for? It's uh, FACHE, which is a fellow of the American College of Healthcare Executives. Ah, uh, okay, okay. And it's through the American College of Healthcare Executives. And it's basically you, you, you have to meet certain educational and certain um certain volunteer experience and um, education outside of your formal education oh, I and see. Then you have to take a um an exam that's 230 questions i believe and once you do all of that <laughs> you can become that you can get your fellow um, oh well congratulations thank you yeah that's awesome um so the next round is the rapid fire questions, which is a fun round. I like that. But before the, I, <laughs> the speed round, the speed round. But before I get there, though, is there something that you were hoping I would ask you that I didn't ask you? Or is it something that you feel like, you know, when you think about leading from the heart and being a servant leader yourself, people need to know this. I think we've talked about it. I think it's, you know, like I said, um, you know, ser be a servant to them. Mm -hmm. Be a servant to your organization. Mm -hmm. Put your needs a little bit farther back. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just, you know, be there to promote people. Give mm -hmm. them the tools. You know, listen. Be mm -hmm. honest. Be transparent. Yeah. Um, those are the things that kind of drive me as a, as a leader. You oh, know, those okay. Are things, those are the things that people need to take away is, is you know, you're here Stop. to serve them. Right. They're not here to serve you. Right. Uh, one thing that I do periodically is I hand out a game ball. And the game ball is a foot, it's a football in this case. And everybody on the team signs it and all the leaders above me sign it. And that's, and, 
And that came from, uh, I remember one of my uh, caregivers at Providence once asked me, they said, you know, you'd be a great quarterback for our team. Oh. And then I thought about that and thought, well, you know what? The quarterback is the guy that leads the team, but also gets all the credit for everything. And I don't want to necessarily be that guy. I want to be more uh, like a coach or, and then it came to me, or more like servant leaders are more like uh, linemen. Oh, okay. Okay. Because linemen are there to block and tackle and move things out of the way so that the other people. On the oh, I love that. Can be successful. I love that. So we talk about that when we, when we hand out the game ball and the game ball in sports is a ball that the coach gives to somebody that helps win the teams or win the game. So that's what it essentially is it's called a game ball. I take that game ball and I hand it to somebody and we talk about it, and they're well deserved, and everyone signs it, and it's because they helped us win the game. Oh, Harold, that's so awesome! I like that. I like that analogy. I mean, I don't quite understand football, but the way you described it makes totally sense. And and so, how has that been received to the people you've given? You know, them? it's been received really well. I think people really enjoy getting the game ball because it's something that it's not like an employee of the month it's something that's handed out every once in a while to somebody that's truly done something Mm -hmm. spectacular and above and beyond to help the team i've given out dozens of them uh over the last 20 years and i've even gone to picnics at people's house and i've seen them on the mantle oh that's wonderful (laughs) they're so proud of these things and one time i went to a person's house and they had like a man cave and I saw this football and I was like, oh, who's, he's like, that's the football, that's the game ball. Because it was in a case, oh, a wow. plastic case on his mantle with a bunch of other memorabilia. And that was his like centerpiece. Uh, I center. love that. It's very so, important to them in that yeah, way. Yeah, it's important to them. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's always somebody that no nobody on the team's ever going to be surprised or upset that that person got it it's going to be somebody that's it's obvious this person deserving of it for sure Mm -hmm. and it's a pretty cool thing oh i like that i like that i might uh share with other people if you're giving me a hand (laughs) i've seen people do baseballs now i've seen people do Mm -hmm. soccer balls um Mm -hmm. yeah all sorts of variations (laughs) of the game ball now so yeah (laughs) no i like so do you do you if somebody likes like the Seahawks or something do you like go buy the Seahawks football or just a it's it's been actually one I try to get the same ball and it's like a decent quality full-size like NFL ball so everybody has room to sign it Uh, it's something that it's a nice ball it's not like a it's not branded yeah it's it's not like that but it's a it's typically the same ball and it's a nice ball but you could do that that's perfectly fine. You know, you can, if, if you know someone likes the Seahawks, you can personalize it. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I present the game ball, I'm, I'm like, well, this person and this person and this person. So I try not to uh, give any clue to, I give little clues, but I don't try to give it away, you know, who it was. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think if I held out a, a certain ball, they might know right away who's it's for. But yeah, yeah. I like it to be kind of a su- surprise. Um, but yeah. The, yeah, you can do it any way you want. It doesn't have to be a football. It doesn't have to be a game ball. It just has to be something special that you do for your team. Yeah, I like that. Thank you for sharing that. I'm sure people would listen and probably start adopting it in their own organizations and doing the same thing. So hopefully they can circle back to you on LinkedIn and say, hey, we are now doing the thing that you shared on. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Le- that would, that from the the heart. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Are you ready for the rapid fire questions? <laughs> The speed <laughs> round, okay. Yeah. All right. What is your guilty pleasure? Guilty pleasure. I think I like to watch television shows that are um, like the behind the scenes kind of, you know, <laughs> tell all documentaries. I love those uh, things. I could watch, I could watch it, those, you know, countless hours. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, what was your first job? My first job, I was a paper boy for the Columbian, delivering papers on my bike. 
Oh, throwing it in next house, next house. <laughs> that was me. Nice. And what was your favorite subject in school? My favorite subject, science in, in high school and, and middle school and elementary school. You know, learning how things work, that kind of stuff, why this why this happens or why that happens has always been interesting to me. Mm. And what is a song that you dance to when no one is looking? <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> well, I tend to, when no one's looking, I tend to play country music, but I definitely don't do a lot of dancing. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, I listen to a little Tim McGraw or one of those. Okay. Uh, yeah. That'll nice. get my feet stomping a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then last one, money or happiness? Happiness, for sure. Mm, nice. Well, I am so excited that you took time to chat and share your journey, really, about, you know, on this leadership uh, road that you're on and the tips that you shared with us and even opened it us to, you invited us into your heart to learn more about you. So I am so grateful that you were able to take time and, and, and chat with me today and I'll be sharing with people. And as I said earlier, I wanna invite people to hopefully, you know, connect with you on LinkedIn and, and share something that they are taking away from this interview. And then, you know, you can make a connection from this interview as well, so. Well, thank you, Camille. I appreciate it. I had fun here and, and uh, I look forward to seeing it. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs>